here and what in the world? You got to help you get this on camera. What in the world is he wearing? This is my carnal suit. This is my flesh. And after a while, if I've been away from God, I get pretty gaudy. <laughs> We're our new sister. You see what I'm saying? Anyway, the Bible says to do what with our flesh? Take off our flesh. Crucify our old man. Can you say amen? amen? And so a lot of times, and this is what I want to say to you. A lot of times in our Christianity, we are serving God in the natural. God doesn't want you to serve him by the natural. He wants you to serve him in the spirit, in your heart. Can you say amen? Amen. So the thing what happens to a lot of people, they mean well, and I, I was one. I was working hard to try to please God. And I was doing this, and I had two kids, and I was in full-time in ministry, and I was doing that. And one day I made the mistake of asking God how, how he felt I was doing. And there was silence in heaven for a space of a half an hour. <laughs> God, how am I doing? See, here's the thing. Christians, we already won in Christ. Can you say amen? Intercessors, as several of you are intercessors like I am, who love to pray, do not pray and do not fight in the natural. Paul says, I don't fight as one who beats the air. But I learned to pray. And so today we got a wonderful lesson for all of us. But to learn how to administrate and how to move in the presence of God. Can you say amen? All right, so what does the Bible say? The Bible says that when we come into God, we're to take off our old man and lay it at the living altar. Can you say amen? And here's how powerful the flesh is. Can the flesh hold itself up? No, it keeps on falling down. You try to, okay, Lord, I'm going to serve. So we know that no man in the flesh can please, come on, no man in the flesh, Romans 8, cannot please God. We have to please God from our inner man. Say amen. Now what in the world is this? This is my carnal mind. This is my wanting to impress you, wanting to dazzle you with my Bible college understanding. This is me not having one Bible, but bringing two Bibles to church. This is the intellectualism Christian. Amen. The Bible says we are not to lean to our own, but in all our ways, acknowledge him. The word, be aware of him and have conversation with him. To acknowledge him means to be aware of God daily throughout the day and have conversation with him. Hello? Religion says, oh, you're unworthy. The Israelites, bless their heart, I love them. Been to Israel. It's wonderful. But the Israelites were told not even to use the word Yahweh, you see. Rather change it to Adonai. Because we don't want to offend God. In the Old Testament, they didn't understand a God indwelling them. Abraham had the promise of God. He was very close to God. Moses very close to God. But many of them had no prayer life. They had no way of interceding. That's why the disciples came to Jesus. Remember? He said, Jesus, teach us to pray. As John taught his disciples. So folks, what are we to do with our carnal mind? Yes. Never come to church with these two items. <laughs> Say amen, somebody. Get into the word together. You ready? We got our scriptures going to be going up. Amen. So we've been teaching a series on new creation realities. Who we are in Christ. Are you been enjoying it? Today we're going to be talking about our victory in Christ. Our victory. Now let me ask you this. Just a couple of things while they're getting the scripture up. Let me ask you. Did Jesus ever lose a battle? Has God ever got off the throne? Listen to me. So if you have ever studied, and I know you do, because you love the Lord. 
The father's never left the throne. Never. He can't. The moment he gets off the throne, God ceases to exist, we're gone. So God has always been on the throne. He never will leave the throne, but he sends in someone else the word, didn't he? Psalms 107 verse 20 says he sent his word and it healed them, delivered us from all our destruction. Who's the word? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Treat the word as God. When you do, you'll find out you'll get the same results as if you and God are butting around. You see, when I say Father in the name of Jesus and I lift up his word, God's absolute attention and heaven's attention is right there. Because that word represents his covenant. Can you say amen? All right. So religion says, well, I hope he heard my prayers. Religion says, well, God is leading me through the mud and the crud. And one of these days I'll figure out what's going on. And they quote scriptures out of Romans 8. It says, eye has not seen, the ear has heard. Neither yet enter into the heart of man. The things which God has prepared for them. But <laughs> in the New Testament... God has given them to us by revelation of the Spirit. Folks, what did Jesus say to Peter? And why did he say to Peter, upon this rock will I build my church? It wasn't Peter. He wasn't the first pope. It was Peter's revealed the word of God. God showed him the word of God. And he built his life on the word of God revealed to him. That's the rock in your personal life. Not what generally is spoken about God. That works. But what's specifically given to you by God in Scripture is the foundation that's under your feet, that cannot be shaken, that walks with you while you're walking through life. Say amen. For the race that we have that's set before us, let us lay aside every weight, worthlessness, and sin so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race that's set before us, looking unto who? Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who do we look to? I'm going to look to the church up the street and see if I'm doing something that they're doing up there to make my church better. This isn't my church, folks. And please don't put your eyes on me. I consider you better than me. And I, when you share the word, when you share the word with others, consider them better than you. And the word will stick. If you come on with an attitude like, hey, I know it and you don't, the word will fall to the ground. It wasn't designed for that. God sent his, his son into the world to do what? To save it, right? God so loved the world, come on, quote it for me, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting. Quote me John 17. For God did not send his son into the wor world. Now listen. To condemn the world. But the world through him. Through him. Might be saved. So guess what? These prophets are condemning everything. They're not of God. God is not in here condemning. I don't know about you. But I don't need anybody to tell me my faults. I can see him. <laughs> I don't need a prophet to tell me the world is falling to hell. Now, I'm not putting anything down. I love, I move prophetically, and I have people and friends that are prophets move in that gift. It's wonderful. But folks, 20 years ago, the church took their eyes off of Jesus and started fighting among themselves. You intercessors, intercessors can remember, 20 years ago, there were so many intercessors. We were praying for revival. Things were breaking apart. And then Satan slowly got our eyes on comparison, comparing one another with one another and saying we're better and our church is more and this. What did the disciples of Jesus, when Jesus asked them and said, why are you so powerless after I laid my hands on you and gave you power over all diseases and sicknesses and demons? Why are you so faithless? What were you talking amongst yourself along the way? Mark 9, read it yourself later. It says, well, we were arguing over who was greatest. The church has been fighting over who's going to be the greatest. Folks, there's none great but God. 
Keep that attitude. Have the same mind that Jesus did. Even though he was made in the image of God, and he was God, he considered himself not, while he was here on earth, to have any reputation, but kept pointing to his Father. Can you say amen? Don't call me good. There's only one good, and that's my Father which is in heaven. The idea is we do not take any credit because the moment we start taking credit, you'll start shorting out your effectiveness. All right, let's get in the lesson, shall we? All right, here's our scripture. Notice the second word. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. It doesn't say whoever, does it? It says whatever. What is that, Pastor Kerry? I'm not going to preach on this too long. This is not my message. Whatsoever is your vision your, your ministry, maybe you have a, your call to preach, maybe you're called to intercede. Intercessors needing to be lifted up. Can you say amen? Because they're praying and breaking up, loose everything. You see, we're not praying for our victory. If you're praying for yourself all the time, you're deceived. You need to be praying for everybody else's victory. You already have the victory. Now pray the devil away from you. Push him away from you. The reason we don't see the devil totally out of our life is we need to take authority and push him away from us. Hello? You're looking at me like, I've been doing that. Here's the key. Don't do it from here. Do it from the core of God inside of you. When you open your mouth and you speak from your spirit, man, it becomes a sword and rips Satan's head off. But when you speak off the top of your head, how you doing? Hey, how's everybody? Have a nice day. Let's have lunch again together. There's no power in that at all. Wait a minute. Let me really pray for you. What am I doing? I'm having good thoughts. Doesn't look like it, Pastor Kerry. You see, there's so many bad teachings and fallacies in the body of Christ that we need to be restraining in our thinking and our focus. Can someone say, oh, me? We do. So I want to greet you, and I want to say, I'm so glad you're here. You are so important to God. With that thought in mind, then we want to value what we hear, value what we do, and we want to make a difference. Say amen. Look at the person next to you and say, make a difference. All right. When Paul the Apostle said for us to walk in the Spirit and we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. He was literally giving us a key to how to walk in the realm of God where we cannot be harassed. Now listen to me. The Bible says, every man's tempted when he's drawn away. If I'm caught up, I'm going to say this to you, just to kind of wet your whistle. If I'm caught up in God, Satan won't be able to tempt me at all. I want to be able to sense him. In fact, when I'm caught up in God, I'm covered with light. I'm filled with the Spirit. And he doesn't want anything to do with me. He waits till I get into myself that he draws me away. So stop getting into yourself. Get into God till we leave this planet. Say amen. You're going to have the time of your life. My goodness, when my pastor told me, he says, Carrie, once you accept Jesus Christ, you're going to have the time of your life if you do the word, not religion, not if you follow everybody else. you got to do what the word says and be like a child. And when you do that, God will have a great adventure for you. One day I'd like to sit down with you and tell you about all the mission trips, the things God did with this child. Amazing. Three people risen from the dead. I didn't even know what that was. I just knew they were dead and they needed to come alive. You see, when we get to thinking we're something, you're nothing. When you get to think you're nothing, God will make you something. If you seek to hide your secrets, God will expose them. But if you seek to expose them to God, say, oh God, I need some help, God will cover them so no one else can pick on them. Boy, that was worth a million dollars for you. I haven't even gotten a lesson. Let's get into this. All right, now, listen. We are children of God now, aren't we? What does that mean? That means you're not a sinner saved by grace. I don't care if you said that a million times. You're not a sinner anymore. Are you continually sinning? So you're not a sinner. You might make mistakes maybe daily or 
you know, say something or get a bad attitude or something. But that doesn't make you a sinner. Okay, when you say, Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me my sin, I surrender. You become a child of God. You're moved out of darkness into light, and now God deals with you as a son, as a daughter, and not as a sinner. So don't walk around as a sinner. Okay? Because that's what it sounds like. Don't walk around with a big, prideful attitude. You're not better than anyone else either. You were saved. And the steak on your plate while you wait, you need to give it out. Can you see, man? I'm talking about Jesus. The steak on your plate while you wait. Instead of the pie in the sky and the by and by. All right, never mind. You want to give Jesus out. Because as we sow, so shall. As we sow, so shall. So if we're always praying for us. Oh, God, help me through this. I got family that doesn't like me. As you sow, so shall you. Now you'll learn it. If you're an intercessor, first thing God's going to deal with you about is the way you talk. Because your prayers are God moving. And if you have a loose lips, then you'll sink your ship. Hello? Preachers are the same way. I can't just ramble off and act like a goof and then come into the pulpit and be Mr. Sanctified. I'm Mr. Sanctified, sister. <laughs> I need to do a cartoon or two or, you know, something like that. All the silly things that pastors think about. All right. Now, there are two of us, folks. Everyone say two. I thought you were schizo. No. <laughs> it's a joke. You're an old person. You're an old man. Say amen. And you're a new man. Say Amen. All right, you're old man, what are we to do? Take it off. What are we to do with a new man? Put it on. How in the world, Pastor Gary, do we do that? In prayer. Coming and you say, Father, in Jesus' name. Everyone say, Father, in Jesus' name. I come to you in prayer. Okay? When you do that, immediately. Again, you might want to challenge me on this, I hope. God takes you and puts you into Christ, and Christ moves you right up to the right hand of the throne. So you just say, Father, in Jesus' name, whoop, you're right up in front of the throne room of God. Okay, hello? Do you, you think Satan hangs out the throne room of God? Do you think he's up there listening into your conversation? So, folks, when you go say, into your prayer room, when you say, Father, in Jesus' name, in your prayer closet, where your car, or whatever you like to pray, I like to pray everywhere. When I say, Father, my name in name Jesus, God puts me into a dome of silence before his throne, and Satan is cut out. So if you ever were taught that Satan listens into your prayers, he doesn't. He listens into what you say after you pray. Well, I certainly hope it's going to work. You see, how many here have Jesus in your heart? Satan is going to look for hands, so... Put your hands up high, everybody. Amen. Jesus lives in your heart, right? So if he lives in your heart, why don't you let him take control of your life? Because the only way Satan can get to you is the areas that you won't let Jesus control. He'll threaten your tough areas, but he'll attack your weak areas. He's a blowhard. He's a liar. Jesus Christ stripped him of all authority, all power, over 2,000 years ago. The only thing he can do is lie and cheat and deceive. He's a flashy flash. Winga, winga, winga. Look over here. Don't look over there. Hello. That's exactly... His job is to distract you away from your intimacy with God so you don't become who God wants you to become and become effective in God's skills and gifts. Say amen. Amen. You are God's body. You are God's expression in the earth. Oh, I want you to be like me. Be a Christian. You never know what God's going to do. Listen, if you said that here recently, you never know what God's going to do. Repent. 
God always tells his kids what he's going to do. The problem is you're not hearing much because you're not doing much. Now, don't get mad at me, okay? It doesn't matter. You don't have to be busy. You have to be effective, and God makes us effective. Say amen. All right, let's get into this. Open your Bibles, please, to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. Our victory in Christ. Now, folks, if I'm out in the parking lot, you've heard me say this a lot, but please get it. If I'm out in the parking lot, where am I? I'm not in here, am I? Now, if I'm in here and not in the parking lot, where am I? Now, if I'm in my car, where am I? If the Bible says, if I am in Christ, where am I? Then why are you walking around in the natural all the time? Good question. So, Lord, how can I get in the spirit more? Now you're asking the right questions. God says, no problem, I'll teach you. Folks, we have been taught. I was taught in Bible college. Two things that just irritates me. Number one, that God doesn't always use us the way we want. They get this description of God like he doesn't know what he's doing. And here's this one. This one really gets me. When, when, remember when you were taught the armor of God? Did you hear this? All the armor's for the front, it's not for the back. It's all for your front protection. Don't dare turn your back on the devil because he'll put an arrow in your back. That person, whoever's teaching that, is just hand-me-down knowledge. The word shield of faith. How many's ever seen the old, the old sitcom, Get Smart? Remember? And then it was a doma, what came down over him? Okay, why is he using? Because that's what happens to you. When you go to meet with God, God covers you, fills you, clothes you, washes you, adjusts you, charges you, puts a dome over you, and says, get out there and do something. We go out there and go, gosh, Joe, I don't know what God's doing in my life. <laughs> now, folks, the armor doesn't fall off. It dims. So you go and get a charge. You're full of light. You're hidden in Christ. We're going to read that in a minute. I don't want to stay too long. This is nothing. Okay. We're hidden in Christ with God, aren't you? You're all charged up. You're glowing. You're full of God. Satan goes, I got to get Carrie out of that. He's blinding me. I told you one time I'm going to show up at church with sunglasses on. You guys are blinding me because you got so much God coming out of you. It's all about God coming out of you. I said it's all about God coming out of you. It's not about what you say all. It's not what about you do all. It's about what God is doing when you say it and when you do. It's coming out of you. Satan cannot stand it. He runs from it. That's why he gave us religion. You never know what God's going to do. God is showing me something heavy. What's he showing you? I don't know yet. How about this one? I got this dream. In this dream, my uncle died. What am I going to do, Pastor? What am I... Why don't you pray against it? What do you think God is telling you for? He needs you to invite him on behalf of your uncle to save him. You see, we have not because we. We have not because we. Prayer, most of the time, is inviting God on behalf of another who doesn't know how to invite God on their behalf. You're actually inviting God in a situation into an area where God has not been invited. He loves intercessors. He loves his children, asking him to get involved in your family's life, into your job's life, into your situation, into your scheduling, into every part of your life. Say amen. And we only have not because... Oh, you're getting it. You're getting it. This is celebration. Church is a celebration of the truth that sets us free. All right, my four points we're going to cover. Glory to God, hopefully. We will cover these four points. The battle has been won. Stop fighting. That's going to hopefully alert your interest. The battle's already been won. Stop fighting. Now, I'll explain later, okay? Two, what it means to be in Christ. Not the religious thought. Truly, if I'm in this building, then I am. If I'm in Christ, then I am. 
and I'm a new creation. So I have a, a choice in the morning to get up in my old creation or get up in my new creation. To see my God who can make me beautiful and positive and, and all the things I need for the day or I can get into myself and make a mess along the way. I'm a little poet there. All right. Thirdly, teaching you to speak from your new man, your spirit man, and not off the top of your head so much. Can you say amen? You can see through all through the Bible, oh Lord, we perish, what are we going to do? God says, where's your faith? Get it in your heart. Get it down here. Don't get it up here. When, you, when you're thinking all the time, it's, what do we do? How come? I'm under this going. I got to show me, Lord. And, and what are you doing? You're doing nothing. You're just sitting around wondering. A double-minded man is what? And fourthly, we're going to talk to you about what Christians are missing today. We're going to see one of the greatest revivals, let me prophesy to you, that's coming up. It's already started. And it's coming down from underneath our feet like a tsunami. And it's beginning to rumble. And the people that spend time in prayer are beginning to hear God say, Stand up, child. I'm rattling the bones. I'm getting a new army, a new people that are going to follow me in faith and in the pure word of God. Someone say amen. I can see it. I've been hearing it for over two years. And I can hear it, hear it. And now the prophets are beginning to speak it. And the word is beginning to declare it. And folks, it's up to you whether you want in on it or not. Because you're the only one holding you back. The devil isn't strong enough to hold you back. He needs you to work with him. Can I say that again? The devil is not strong enough to destroy your life. He needs your flesh to work with him about it. Get out of the flesh, say amen. Look somebody at right in the eye and say, is there any flesh there? <laughs> Look out or I'll whack you with my pepperoni stick. And if anybody doesn't know what that's about. Okay, first point. The battle has been won. Go with me to Colossians chapter 2. Look at verse 12 through 15. Colossians 2, 12 through 15. Look at it. It says, we are buried with him in baptism. Everyone knows that baptism means immersed. Just like this rag, it's immersed. Can you say amen? This is something that you should do in your prayer closet every day. Get immersed into God. Baptism just means to be immersed. How many know that if you have a good book you're reading, good mystery or something you like, you can be immersed in that book. So you can be baptized, okay? So it means to be immersed. Now we know what water baptism is, so let me explain. It says, therefore, it says, in, in second, so you got that scripture, right? Okay, so listen to this. In, did I say 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16? Yeah. Okay. All right. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Look at your neighbor. What has been wrong with the church? It's been picking on one another's faults. A Christian should never do it. Pick on your own. Go look in the mirror and observe your natural man. Observe your spiritual man. And go away, remember the spiritual part, and let the natural go. Say amen, that's James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25. Okay. Therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Don't look at people's outward man. That's not the real, do you know that this is not the real me? This is going somewhere. My goodness, I already donated my one leg. You see, this is not going. So why do you spend time pampering this? I'm, I'm pointing to my flesh for those that are listening. Okay. So we regard no one after the flesh. We don't sit around and go, why am I so stupid all the time? I'm doing this, I'm clumsy, and I'm stupid, blah, 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 blah. Don't ever do that. You're talking about yourself before God created you. You're not junk. Just the outward flesh is the junk. So daily lay it at God on the altar and don't carry it around with you. How can I not carry my flesh around with you? Because you laid the carnal part down at Jesus. And he pulverized it with his presence 
So we carry around a servant body and not a rebellious body. Moving right along. So even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, we know him no longer. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given to us, every one of us, the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19. That is that God was in Christ, reconciled the world to himself. God is in you, and every time you start sharing, that reconciliation anointing will come out, and people will want to get saved. Unless you share Christ off your flesh. Then they'll want to punch you. Because there's two different tones. There's a tone that comes out of our recreation spirit that has power in it. And there's a tone that comes out of our carnal man. Can I give you an illustration? What do you think you're doing? Does that sound spiritual? Yeah. I'm, see, I liked it. I've been teaching this stuff for years. Stay out of that part. <laughs> Say amen. All right, let's go on. Look what it says. And it goes on and says, now, and you being dead in your trespasses in the uncircumcision of your flesh, he's made alive together with Christ or with him, having forgiven what? All your trespasses. How much? All. So you, you're going to mess up tomorrow. Is that covered? Yes. yes, because you're a child of God and not a sinner. Okay? I like that. I, I remember... The book, Thinner. Do you remember that by Stephen King? Thinner. Don't, if you're overweight, don't read it. Anyway, Thinner. So the idea is, you're not a sinner. Don't be waiting for your next mistake. There's some people wandering around waiting for them to blow it again. My goodness, don't wait around for you to get sick or wait around for you to blow it again. You're a child of the living God. You're filled with God. You're clothed with God. Get up and live. Live loud. Live righteous. Live happy. And somebody asks you, why, Sherry, are you so happy? We got a double Sherry over there. Because of Jesus. Let me tell you all about him. Oh, I don't want to hear that religion. Jesus is not religious. Jesus... It was the religious people. Did you, did you read your Bible? The religious people yelled, crucify him. Because Jesus didn't fit the bill. Folks, this church doesn't fit the bill. This is a different kind of church. This is a church where we get to the nitty gritty. His name is God. Amen. And we wrap our life around him. We have him lift us up. Can you say amen? Nobody here has an agenda. I'm not here getting you to join anything. You can't even call this a cult. Cults make you lose stuff and make you join stuff. There's nothing to join here but God. Hallelujah. And look what God is doing. God told me that when you get involved in ministry again, because I was heavily involved, knew lots of good people. I won't drop names. So. He says, when you get involved in ministry again, don't advertise. Let the people who are touched do the advertising for you. Hi, guys. Have you been touched? Sometime I want you to tell all the people that God is, what he's done for you. And then the new ones will go, my goodness, my goodness. Same God you have. We have. We have. You have. The idea is our focus. Our focus is not on being important. Listen. Our focus is not trying to be somebody. Our focus is loving the one who makes us somebody. So stop trying to be something. Please God in your trying, and he'll make you something, because you already are his child, aren't you? All right. So listen as it goes on. What did he do for us, Pastor Kerry? Well, he forgave us all trespasses. He's made us alive together with Jesus, having forgiven, and then wiped out the handwriting and the ordinances that were against us and nailed it out of the way. Do you know what that means? You see, when Adam sinned, we were all doomed to hell. Why would God do that? He didn't do that. Satan did. Once Adam committed high treason, Satan's nature in it is called sin and separated him from God. Hell became that 
choice. But God didn't leave us alone, did he? He already had a plan. But it's a plan that runs on volunteer. We have to volunteer to accept Christ. He doesn't force us. He doesn't slam it down our throat. Now there might be some to do. But, but he invites us constantly. All your life you'll be invited to get closer to closer to God. And if you feel like you have arrived, you haven't. He'll invite you to get closer and closer. God wants me to speak to you, Linda. He says, all these years I've heard your prayers. And I've honored them. But it, not like today, I'm going to quicken those prayers. And you're going to see immediate miracles begin to happen from this day forward. I want to hear about the first one when it starts happening. Oh, we've already had a bunch. But God says he's so pleased in you taking that time to be with him way before I ever knew you. Okay, that's a good word for you, says. Very good. And it's true, right? I didn't fall off the wagon. <laughs> <coughs> okay, Lord, excuse me, I cough in here. All right. Having wiped out the handwriting of the ordinances. So, everything that the law said, you're guilty, you're going to hell, Jesus took out of the way. Now, listen, let me ask you this question. Some of you know it, some of you don't. When were your names written down in the Lamb's Book of Life? Now, don't holler it out, wait, and let everybody settle. When was your name? When you got born again? When you repented of your sin? Okay, tell me. Before the foundation of the world, God wrote you down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now listen carefully. Everybody, everybody, every human being born is born alive because of what Jesus has done now. So they're born alive, but they're born in a sin factory. Like in a corral with sin, the world. And so that little baby, if it dies before it's born, goes directly to heaven. If that little baby is one or two years old and dies by some awful thing, goes directly to heaven. God does not hold sin against someone who can't figure out what sin is. But when we get old enough to know right from wrong, that's when we separate from God and we must become born again. Say amen. God does not ever purpose for you to be lost or go to hell. It is not in his understanding for you to do that. But it will happen because he's got to legally rescue us and we know what the plan is redemption can you say amen where he's constant today even now he's working on redeeming and making you better say amen i i, I hope you, you're letting him do that amen but listen so what happened when that child gets old enough to know right from wrong their sin blots their name out and their their name is has a redacting in it if you don't know redaction it's it's when the government doesn't want you to see something, they just mark it out. Our sin marked out our name, okay, until we accept Jesus Christ. Now, when Jesus hung on that Christ cross and he said, Father, it is finished, his blood became the heavenly blot remover. And his blood went over your name. And, oh, Peggy, Peggy's received Jesus. And the blot remover goes over her name and her name reappears in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hello. And your name, when you say Jesus is coming into my heart, he, he removes your blot. Now remember, he not only removes your blot, but he removes all your sin until the day you die. And if you do blow it, he will personally deal with you and not, don't let other people do it. <laughs> when I had my big boo-boo, I went to all my friends and they told me to get the blank out of town. Some of my people, I helped them build their church and train them. Because I was too much for them to handle. Listen, don't you ever kick somebody away who wants to come back to the Lord. Do you hear me? The curse that will fall on you. Pushing people away who want to return. The church needs to start accepting the broken. Accepting those who have been shunned. Sister, you have been misunderstood. And God says, I am healing that. And today is a new day for you. 
to let the past go. Amen. Let that past go. Doesn't matter what anyone says. You can neutralize word chains by simply saying, every word spoken against me that's not your will for my life, I break its chain and throw it to the ground. For such is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me. God will condemn conversation that comes against his children. Say amen. You don't want to get on God's rough side. Say amen. <laughs> Say the battle's been won. Why am I still fighting? Because we're fighting because we think we need to. Didn't Jesus beat the tar out of the devil? Didn't Jesus say in Matthew 28, 18, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me? How much? How much? Then what are you running around giving the devil power for? Where's the devil getting his? Ignorance. Mis being mistaught. Bad confession. Gossip. Malice. We feed him like a, a vampire. He'll come into your marriage and he'll say, your husband is having an affair. And, and you have no evidence. But now all of a sudden you start seeing a little flirtatious and you never did before. That's how Satan works. You would have never heard that suggestion if you weren't thinking already that way. Move along. Carry, move right along. All right, second point, everyone say, got it. The victory is won. So why are we fighting? We're fighting over the souls of our family, our friends, over our country, our cities, amen, our towns. We are pushing the devil out. Can you say amen? Darkness covers. The word occult means to cover, to hide. Okay, but light shall shine into darkness and the darkness cannot overwhelm it. How powerful is light? Man, I can light a little, we could shut all the lights off in here, not a single light. And I can say fire and you guys would fall all over yourself trying to get out. You'd have to feel your way out. I love this illustration, one of the first ones God ever gave me. You shut off all the light in your life and you'll have to run by your feelings. Sound familiar? Feelings. If you're not in the word and you're not praying like you should and you're not shutting down some of the negatives, you won't have enough light to see. The God of this world have blinded the minds of them that believe not lest at any time the light should shine unto them. Amen? Hello? So, let's get into this. So, you are ready one. You're in Christ. Say amen. So how do we get into battles? How do we get into strife? How do we get into those things? We're pulled away from intimacy with God. Hello? Do you really need to argue? Well, I'm right, you know. You see, so there's a system set up for us to... Pull back and rest in. And that is in the kingdom of heaven. Can you say amen? We are surrounded by God. We are in a kingdom. Say amen. It's an invisible kingdom. Hello? That means Satan has to go through God to get to you, Sherry. Sherry's. He has to go through God to get to you unless you are out of God into yourself. I want you to get this. Paul spent many a paragraph of teaching to teach people about their flesh, about their spirit, about their soul, and how to understand which one you're operating out from, which one you need to keep in subjection. The Bible says that one of the fruit of the Spirit is for us to control ourselves. Say amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you're out of control. <laughs> amen. The church... It's been like somebody hit it with something, and they're just plumping, 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 plumping. We're all having good church. Nobody knows exactly where they're heading, what, they're, what the vision. We have our vision written down here, what we're going, what we intend. There's so much room for your gift in this church. Don't let your eyes trick you. This is not, the building is not the church. I can have 15 services during the week. We just need to get the people. Can you say, man, you are the church. This is a building. Welcome to God's living room. <laughs> That's what it is. 
God's living room. We come and we listen to God, we watch God, we worship God, we give to God. We do everything around who? God. You got it. Second point. What it means to be in Christ. Romans 6, please. Chapter 1. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. We are children of God and have been forgiven. So don't be ready to go out and make another mistake. <laughs> Two, all of, our, all of mankind's sin and its effects Jesus took. So if Jesus took our sins and effects, why should we cover our life with all these mistakes? You don't have to be making mistakes. You don't have to have it your own way. Can you say amen? Romans 6 verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? What's the answer, everyone? No. This is for the Christian that thinks, now that I'm saved, I can just do whatever I want. I'm saved. We call that once saved, always saved. I don't like the phrase. Okay, I believe in God's power to keep us as stronger than sin's power to destroy us. But why would you put your hand in the bottom of a dog's face? And pull it up to you and go, woof, you get bit. <laughs> we are covered. You are a child of God. Now let's find out how to operate in that kingdom. How to use the gifts properly. How to understand the offices. Do you know I'm a pastor? But I'm also a human, aren't I? I hope so. Are you a hybrid pastor? No. <laughs> I'm a human. But I'm sitting in an office, right? So let me ask you, as being a human, I'm human. But the office is holy. Whose office is it? Pastorate is a, an office of God. The person in the pastorate is just human. Don't get them mixed up. Because if your eyes are on the human, you're going to see all my humanness. <laughs> But if your eyes in respect to God, you're going to see the office and the gift operating. See the difference? So what Satan does is he gets our eyes off of the, the supernatural in the spiritual realm and puts it on the natural realm so that we can see faults. How many know there's plenty of faults? How many know you have plenty of them? Amen. Enough to go around. Somebody says, I can't wait to find that perfect church. Want to find that perfect church? Well, don't go. Because the moment we go with all our flaws, it won't be perfect anymore. It's a hot church is a hospital for the sick. Hello. Don't complain if there are people worse off than you and you go, that person really is bad off. What do we do? Pray. <laughs> this is a hospital for people who are lost, who need to be found, who need a better relationship with God. Can you say amen? I'm not going to the hospital. There's too many sick people there. Moving right on. So here's what it means to be in Christ. Shall we continue to sin? No, if you're in Christ, you'll stop sinning. Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know as many as of us were baptized into Christ? See the word? Immersed into Christ. Jesus were baptized into his death. So folks, you are supposed to have died to your selfishness. Say amen. amen. And I always like to get this illustration. You see, if I'm a baby, my mom could say, gee, Carrie, you're pretty ugly. And me not understanding, I'm just going to coo, and, you know, unless they're harsh in their tone. You see, when you're dead and when you're crucified in Christ, you're not looking to find offense towards another person. You don't take offense because it doesn't matter what anybody says to you. You're a dead person. You're living to Christ. Say Amen. And I, you're, you just called me an ugly person. Isn't that great? I had a guy do that. He says, I don't like you. I says, I made the mistake. How did you like the sermon and the service today? I didn't like it at all. You've heard this story. I said, what do you mean? He said, I didn't like your preaching. I didn't like your humor. I didn't like that cockiness that you have. And I said, well, look, I'm sorry. I didn't know what to say, you know. Probably, he was probably a little bit right. I said, oh, Okay. This is when we were up in Buckley at the Mason Temple, man. We used to anoint that place. Anyway, 
So I walked away, and then I came back, and he says, excuse me, Pastor. I want to say I'm sorry. The reason why I said all those things to you is my wife dragged me to church, and I didn't like her dragging me to church, and I picked on you about it. So sometimes we prejudge something because we're not to look at the outward flesh. Love does not consider when people do it wrong. They simply want to help. Say amen. Amen. So being in Christ means that we're no longer ourselves. So the Bible says if any man be in Christ. Now, if I'm in the parking lot, where am I? If I'm in Christ, where am I? So being in Christ is to be aware of him and be in fellowship with him. You do that every day by meeting with God. That's all you do. Do it all day and just keep him in your conversation all day long. Your armor will stay on. You'll be bright and shiny. If there's any danger coming your way, God will alert you before it comes near you. If somebody's going to con you or do anything out of sorts, your armor will alert you. Because who is your armor? Jesus Christ. It says, put on the armor of light. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. See, we always make everything mechanical. When I was first taught about the armor, I was trying to straight out my helmet of salvation. I had these terrible thoughts that would creep through my mind once in a while. I'm trying to straighten my helmet. And then the devil would, I didn't know it was the devil, he would say, what about your breastplate? Oh, yeah, my breastplate. And I was trying to dress myself. Anybody was like that? You don't dress yourself with the armor. God put it, puts it on you. You don't. Since when? Do you see my helmet of salvation on? No, but Satan does. See, God puts those supernatural things on us. We just go to the dressing room. When I got married, I had to get fitted for a suit. Folks, every day, listen to me. I'm going to talk to you. If I, I don't want to say anything else. I'm going to say this. Every day when you meet with God, he fits you with your suit for that day. Hello? That includes everything in it. Now, how many here didn't know that when you went to pray? If not, you know it now. You go right in and your father takes good care of you. He's, he, you're not only in the throne room, but you're in the dressing room. And he's dressing you and he's cleansing you. He's charging you and he's fitting you. He's fixing you. How many here in, in here, be honest, have a few fixable things? That's where you get fixed. Folks, you do not grow by doing. I'm going to just rest on that for a minute. You don't grow by doing. You tone. You tone your muscles by doing. You grow by being with God in your prayer closet. He's the sun. The sun grows the seed. So we're thinking of going out there trying to be better and working hard and everything, and that's good. But the growing part of our maturity comes on our... So much that the microphone batteries quit. <laughs> Gosh, I'm only in two points of this, so we might have to break it up and, and carry it next week. But let me just share something. Now. Folks, you, we've been sold a bill of goods. It's been a bad teachings all around. First of all, who lives in you now? Okay. So remember, next time you say, oh, God's leading me somewhere, and I don't know where he's leading me, look down inside of yourself and say, are you lost, God? Because that's how that analyzation is. It's crazy. We think after we've been saved a little while that we got it down. Don't ever act that way in front of God. You don't have anything down. Just simply obey. Just simply obey and then who gets the credit? Amen. You know, I can play the drums really good. But I can play them better with Jesus. And why aren't you playing them now? Because I'm waiting for the rest of the musicians who are disobeying God. To get up here and play. Hello. I want a band. Good heavens, I worked with some of the best. Amen. I want a band again. So meanwhile, we're singing to a screen. 
Sing with all your heart. Say, give us a band while you're doing it. <laughs> you know, but I don't want just anybody up on this stage. I want him to be a worshiper. I want her to be an intercessor. Somebody that knows how to bring the glory down when they sing. Can you say amen? Yeah. So let's go back to what we covered because I'm gonna let, I want to break it off at 11.30. You guys are so, so blessed. And we'll come back next week and hit the rest of that, okay? Now, if you need notes today, you get those notes. See my wife if you want them. So going back into Christ. Open your Bibles to Colossians chapter 3. Okay? We're going to look at this last scripture for just a minute. Colossians chapter 3. I don't know if I got it in there or not. Yeah. Colossians chapter 3. If it's not in there, that's okay. And I kind of summarized the sermon today and then started up next week on our second, our third and fourth point, okay? All right. Colossians chapter 3 says, if you be risen with Christ, are you reading with me? It's not in the notes. It's in your Bible. Colossians 3, verse 1 says, If you be risen with Christ. Now, let me see the hands of those that are risen with Christ. Seek those things which are what? Somebody said to me, he says, Our mind is supposed to be in the, in the spiritual, in the heavenly realm. I says, yes. And then they quote me, You can't be so spiritually minded, you're no earthly good. Religion. Listen, I want to be so heavenly minded that I speak so powerfully and such with such wisdom that it gives us insight. That's what a pastor's supposed to do. We're not supposed to run around and read you the news. Talk about what the enemy's doing. Hey, he's already lost. Are you with me? The Bible says, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Ephesians chapter 2 says, if you be risen with Christ, you're sitting at his right hand. In him of God. Say, say, I'm risen with Christ. And it says, for you died. Now this is where Christians haven't got it. We are dead. And our life is hidden with Christ in God. See the word hidden there? Hidden from who? Hidden from what? Why is the word hiding in there? Why is the word all through the Psalms about hiding in the cleft of the rock, hiding in the strong mighty town, hiding, having all these things not befall us, and no weapon formed against us? Why is all that in there, Pastor Kerry? Because Satan doesn't like it, and he wants us to be blind to it, and God wants us to know we're living far short. From what God has provided. Do you believe that? Yes. I, I don't believe my father would send his son to hell. And get him to rise again from the dead. Just to give us some kind of Kmart package. Nothing wrong with Kmart. But it's not here any longer. I don't think. Is it? We got, Wal we got Walmart. And all that. But anyway. You see. Religion will say, you can't always expect, and some of you heard this in your mind, you can't always expect God to do all your fighting for you. You know, that's a lie. I expect him to do all my fighting for me. Because when I fight, I always mess up. How many of you remember when you were a kid? I used to be a little ornery kid. And one day I was working with my dad putting on a roof to our car garage in Prairie Ridge. Anybody know where Prairie Ridge is? It's a little bit bigger than South Prairie, where I used to live. Too. Anyway, I'm on the roof of my dad, and here comes some of my old friends. And they ended up flipping me off and calling me an elephant. My last name is Elephant. It doesn't bother me anymore, but I wasn't saved. And you know, something came over me, and I turned white with anger. I walked calmly down the ladder, and I walked calmly down the street, opened the door to his house, pulled him out on the lawn, and started beating the tar out of him. Now, aren't you glad you don't know that, Carrie? <laughs> and to this day, God has given me a reminder, a broken knuckle where I bashed it on his face. Now, his dad and his brother are on top of me, and I'm just wailing away. Now, is that sounding like it's real? That's how the world is. 
Satan loves it, so he'll tell you that, over, that you don't like you, and you don't like that, and you know those people over there, and you know what it is? And guess what he did for the last two years? He's got you complimenting and, and coming against the, the nation of America doing the devil's bidding. You saw what the devil did, and he did that because the church was asleep. We weren't standing and telling him to let go of our country, but now we are. Can you say amen? Now, I don't want you to, on some political thing. I just want you to know you're on the side that won. And if you have already won, then you need to be asking God the disciplines of your life so that you maintain that victory and you can help pull others out of the fire. If you got something out of that this morning, would you give the Lord praise?